Yorls is a self-hosted URL shortener that's absolutely amazing. Now, this video isn't about how to install it, but that video is coming. And when it's available, you'll find it here. That's where I'll tell you more about what Yorls is and why you want it for the links that you share. This video is about how to use Yorls once you already have it deployed. Why am I doing them backwards? That's a good question. It's because I'm from the future and I already have it running. There are people like you who just want to start using it. So I thought I'd make a video that shows you how to log in, how to shorten URLs, how to view statistics for any URL that you've shortened, and how to set up your local machine to shorten URLs from the clipboard through the API. If you go to the root of your shortener domain, you're going to either hit a blank page, a redirect, or an error. That's because the root of the domain isn't supposed to do anything. It's a URL shortener. So we need to go to URL paths in order for it to work. The path that we log into is slash admin. And once we're there, we'll see something like this. From here, you can shorten URLs or interact with URLs that you've already entered. Each URL shows the shortened link on the left, followed by the original URL, the date that it was added, the IP that added it, the number of clicks that it's seen so far, the name of the person who added it, and then some buttons for statistics, editing, or just deleting the URL. Now, it's okay if your installation of URLs looks different. URLs uses a plugin model, and the installation that I'm showing you here is configured for multi-user access. And that's why there's a username field there. What about that IP field? Why are they all the same? Well, that's because this installation of URLs is running under Kubernetes, so the URLs installation picks up the address of the local load balancer pod that's sending in the traffic. You can just ignore it. Below that list, you have options for searching that enable you to filter by date, clicks, or the original or shortened URL. The easiest way to shorten a URL is to enter the original URL and then just click the button to shorten it. This will generate a unique, random, five-character shortened URL. If you prefer to have a shortened URL that's human readable, you can also just enter your own shortened URL, and as long as it's available, well, that'll be assigned to the original URL. Personally, I recommend that you avoid creating custom paths unless you need them for sharing, like if you're telling somebody over the phone or typing it, or for SEO reasons. The whole point of a URL shortener is to have short, unique URLs, and custom paths quickly become long in order to remain unique. No one wants a long, shortened URL, do they? I didn't think so. URLs that you've shortened appear in the list, and you can interact with them from the buttons on the right. When you click Edit, you can change the original URL, the shortened URL, or the title. Being able to change the original URL is helpful when we update content. After publishing something new, you can come back in here, change the original URL to point to the new destination, and then all of the links that you've already published everywhere with the short URL will continue to work, but the content stays fresh. Even though you can change the shortened part of the URL, don't do it unless it's absolutely necessary, because when you change it, any link that existed previously is going to stop working, and that probably isn't what you want. It's better just to create a new URL. If you want to delete something, well, you can just click the Delete button to have it removed from the database, even though that's another one of the things that you probably don't want to do unless it's absolutely necessary. The whole point of using a URL shortener is to make sure that the links stay active forever, with the destinations being updated as we need them. This gives published content a very long tail, and it helps keep the SEO value of the content very high. What about statistics? Every URL keeps track of clicks, and they're visible on the main page. When you drill into the statistics, you can see how clicks are distributed over time, and there's a breakdown for the last 24 hours, 7 days, 30 days, and then all time. Urls will tell you the best day that you've had so far, and if you click for more details, you can drill down into the months, and then it'll show the days where the URL received at least one hit. This is a new system, so every day is a good day. In our case, traffic location doesn't have any data because all of our traffic appears from the Kubernetes network. And that's not a big deal because in most cases, the destination URL will have some sort of analytics that show you where the traffic originated. Traffic sources shows you referrers, the sites that hosted the short link that people clicked. It also shows you the ratio between direct traffic and referred traffic. Direct traffic is when a user types the URL directly, go figure, or more often when the referring site just doesn't send the referrer header when the user clicks a link. What are you going to do? The Share tab gives you all of the URLs associated with this entry. And if you note down at the bottom, there's a direct link to the statistics page. Now, 
you see there, it's just a shortened URL followed by a plus sign. This works for any shortened URL in this system. If you want to know its statistics, just put a plus after it in the location bar, and instead of being redirected to the destination, you'll be taken to the statistics page. The real power of URLs comes from its fast workflows, and I'm going to show you two of them. The first workflow is called prefixing, and it's super easy to use. If you're on any page with a URL that you want to shorten, just put your shortener domain in front of the entire URL. So let's say that I wanted to bookmark the SUSE and Rancher community site. I simply put SUSE.to slash in front of the HTTPS and press enter. URLs intercepts the request, creates the short link, and then takes me to the detail page for it. That's super easy, right? And now the second one uses the API, and I have it set up on my Mac with a hotkey, or more like a hot string, and an automation workflow so that it will translate anything in my clipboard into a shortened URL. And first, it looks like this. It is so fast for going from long to short URLs without leaving a document, and it's the way that I most often interact with URLs. The core logic here is an automator routine that takes the contents of the clipboard and runs them through a script. The script makes an API call to URLs using my API secret key, and URLs returns the shortened URL. The automator script copies that back into the clipboard. Now, the automator script itself is wrapped by a keyboard maestro macro, and when I type a special series of characters, in this case, the equal sign followed by SUSU, -S -S it executes the automator workflow. Equals SUSU -S is not something that I'm likely to ever type under normal circumstances, so it makes a safe, easy trigger. Keyboard Maestro first erases my text, and then it triggers the automator workflow. After the workflow finishes its work and copies the result into the clipboard, Keyboard Maestro just pastes the contents of the clipboard back into the document. The result is that I copy or cut a URL, type a few characters, and then a few seconds later, I have a shortened URL in its place. URLs is smart enough to recognize when a URL already exists in the database, and it'll just return the existing shortened version of it, with a couple of exceptions. The first is if the URL ends in a slash or not. For example, the URL SUSE.com is different from the URL SUSE.com slash. The HTTP standard says that using a trailing slash is the correct way to write a URL when not loading a specific document, so I recommend that you always use a trailing slash or just whatever shows in the browser when you visit the site. The other one is if the URL contains a query string, which is the extra data that follows a question mark at the end of the base URL. Query data tells the base URL to behave a certain way, so these key value pairs actually make the URL unique even if the base URL is the same. You'll find your API secret key under Tools, down at the bottom where it says Secure Passwordless API Call. This is a secret that gives access to the system via the API, but it's important to keep it safe. That's why mine says redacted. I'll include a link to the automator workflow in the video description, along with a link to Keyboard Maestro. This page has some other ways to interact with URLs, like bookmarklets that trigger different scenarios. I personally don't use them, I just use the API call, but you can give them a try if you want. They might work for you. So that's URLs. It's fast, it's free, it's powerful, and it's ready for you to start using it. Now, if you're on one of the systems that I manage, just reach out to me directly and I'll tell you how you can get an account and start shortening URLs today.